Well, welcome back to another specimen series. And the plan tonight, as I'm back out on the eel hunt, we filmed an eel video last year, which went down really well. We caught lots of eels, but me being a specimen hunter, I wanna try and catch a bigger eel. And I've got a real hunch about this lake. I've done a bit of carp fishing on here, and every now and again, a carp angler will pick up a big eel. So the plan tonight is not only to try and catch an eel or two, but I want a big one. I found some nice clear spots out there. I'll tell you a little bit more about the location and why I've chose this part of the lake, but for now I want to get the gear out of the van and get everything set up before it gets dark. On these type of gravel pits where the water's very clear, I've never found the eel fishing to be very good during the daytime. So it was a case of a nice leisurely setup. As I unloaded the van, I just wanted to make sure everything was perfect, set up nice and neatly for when that light started to fade and I felt the eels would start to come on the feed. So once I was happy that everything was set up nice and neatly, it was a case of getting the rods wrapped up, getting baited up with my favourite eel baits onto my ever faithful eel rigs, and then getting those rods cast neatly onto those spots. I choose to use a drop-off indicator with an open bail arm. Eels absolutely hate feeling any resistance, and if they do, they'll quite often drop the bait. Well, that's those first two rods out perfectly. And I decided to put those two rods both on lobworms and they're on the ever faithful twig rigs. It's so important to use those rigs. They stop you from deep hooking the eels. I'd say 99% of the eels I catch on those rigs are always lip hooked. There's a slight variation of the twig ring on those. I've used a little bit of my knowledge from tench fishing to fish those lobworms worm kebab style. It means the worms don't come off when I cast them out a little bit further. And also I can nick a little mesh PVA bag of maggots for some extra attraction. But this third rod's going to be slightly different. It's a normal twig rig. I'm going to put a small dead bait on there, then I'm going to spod some maggots over the top. And I won't go into too much detail how to tie this rig because we have covered it before. And if you want to know exactly how to do it, we'll put a link in the description below, taking you to a quick bite, giving you all the details you need. I chose to bait up with the head section of a small roach. I find coarse baits the best baits to use and the fresher you can get them, the better. And then I secure them in place with a bait flag, especially as I like to use barbless hooks. The last thing you want when you cast those rods out, especially after dark, is for the bait to come off. I need to know that all three rods are fishing effectively as they can quite often be in position for long periods of time. I decided not to put a mesh bag of maggots onto that rod. The reason I didn't do it is I needed to cast that rod a little bit further out, and instead of putting that mesh bag on, I put two or three spawns of live maggots over the top. Let's face it, eels absolutely love maggots, whether you use live maggots or an alternative, you can use dead maggots. I'm not at all surprised that I haven't had any inquiries yet. With this eel fishing on these clear gravel pits, quite often the action doesn't begin till it gets dark. But whilst I'm waiting for bite time, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the location and the spots that I like to fish. So where I am today is Layfield Lakes in Norfolk. And the reason I've chose this pit, it's a syndicate that I joined for a bit of carp fishing, but it lays in the Wensum Valley. So we've got the River Wensum behind us, and I find if you fish a pit that is in close proximity to a river, that's quite often a good place to find a few eels. And I'm pretty sure, as I mentioned before, not only is there eels in here, but there's one or two really big eels. So that's what we're hoping for. And when it comes to spots and locations for the eels, 
Well, if the truth be known, on the nights when the eels are really feeding, quite often they'll find you. But a good place to start is if you can find a nice bit of depth. This is a very weedy pit, so I've had a bit of a mark around with a marker to find some clear spots. And I've got a nice deep margin to my right. So I've positioned two rods along that deep margin. It's still got six to seven foot within a rod length of that bank. And then my third rod straight out towards the back of some pads. Again, they're seven foot deep and it's nice and clear surrounded by a little bit of weed. So those spots should be perfect. And hopefully once it gets dark, the meals will come out, get on the feed and those drop offs will start falling off. The light is now slowly starting to dip and I've just had a clip out on this right hand rod. So I'm just gonna feel it just to make sure that is a fish. I think there's something there. We're about to find out. Yep, and I'd say that's an eel as well. So, well, it's unusual to get a bite in the, um, before it gets dark. A very unusual fight with an eel they kind of go into reverse gear you kicked up a load of bubbles out there as well there's no mistake in an eel and it's nice to get a bite before it gets dark and it's not a huge eel but it's quite a nice one <laughs> here he comes Whoa. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, came off of the net. But he wasn't a particularly big one, so I'm not gonna uh, lose any sleep over that one. Although that eel came off at the net, it didn't really phase I me. Mean, if anything, it was a massive confidence booster. I felt if I got a bite in the daylight, I'd be sure to get even more bites once the sun went down. So I decided to refresh all rods just to make sure they're all fishing really effectively in prime bite time. As an all-round angler, I would say that a really big eel is the holy grail of specimen fish. They say it can take up to 10 years for an eel to reach a pound in weight. So if I'm fortunate enough to catch an eel, say over five pound, that could perhaps be over 50 years old. As well as that, there's a lot of mystery that surrounds eel fishing. A massive eel could turn up at any type of venue. And it's that mystery that means I like to dedicate a few nights each summer trying to catch that massive eel. Finally connected with an eel after several frustrating aborted takes. And I think the reason I'm missing them is because I don't think they're very big. This one doesn't feel very heavy. Still put them back fairly though. It'd be nice if I am wrong and it is big, but it didn't feel particularly heavy when I first picked the rod up. one at that. Talk about that for being lucky. Look, the hook's actually come out in the net. That doesn't often happen when you're eel fishing, but it's a sign that the rigger's doing its, doing its job and not deep hooking them. It's a barbless hook as well, which also helps. That's a nice eel that is, I'm going to weigh it and see quite how nice it is. Be very gentle, normally if you're very gentle with them they behave themselves. Zip him up nice and safe in here so he doesn't get out. 
and we'll see how big it is. Well, I thought it was a half decent one. It's just a fraction over four pound, that one probably somewhere between four one and four two. It's been such a frustrating night so far. I've had so many clip outs where they've just picked it up, ran with it, dropped it. I've felt them chewing away on the end. And that's what happens with eel fishing sometimes, but I've finally connected with one. And normally if you're quite gentle with them, they will behave themselves, but that's a nice eel. That was an over four pound, this one. So I'd say that's a fairly big eel. And there's still chance for another one yet. What a frustrating night it was last night. For some reason last night I was getting lots of clip outs and they just kept dropping those baits. And I'm not sure why, because the two eels that I've had have been quite big eels. So you'd think the bigger eels would be a bit more confident feeding, but for whatever reason, they just weren't there on a lot of those takes. But I've just been woken up this morning. The left-hand rod's gone out during the daylight, which is really encouraging. And I've got my second nice eel on the mat. And before I try and pick this eel up, I'm going to give you a couple of tips on handling these eels. And the first tip is to have a cradle, a high sided mat. So when you put them on the unhooking mat, they're not going to keep crawling off the mat and you're not going to be chasing them around the swim. And another thing, it seems the bigger the eel, the slightly more well behaved they are. And if you can turn the eel slightly upside down and just run your fingers down the length of the eel, it seems to just calm them down. And then when you do pick them up, don't grip them tightly. Just cup your hands underneath them and generally they'll be quite well behaved and there we have another nice chunky eel not quite as big as that one during the dark but another nice one that's for sure but i'm going to get that rod back out because as i've had a bite in the daytime that is encouraging there might be a chance of another bite so i'm going to stay a little bit longer than i usually would and push my luck and see if i can get just one more I really hoped for another daytime bite. Like I said, it is unusual to catch eels during the daylight. The rule of thumb when eel fishing, it seems as if the later on you get into the night, the more tired you get, the more active the eels get. That can make these sessions very, very challenging. They really test your endurance and they can be quite difficult to film as well. I think this is daytime bite number two, which is uh, an added bonus if they're gonna feed during the daytime. So fingers crossed. And we're into our second eel of the morning. We didn't need to camp out all night after all, Chris. We could have came down in the morning. Now this doesn't feel very big at all, but you never know, he might just be swimming towards me. It's a little pike. <laughs> oh.
Well, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> On the toy, Greg. Well, that was a tad disappointing. There's always a risk when you're fishing little dead baits that you might pick up pike or perch, but I think I might call it a day in a little while. I'll give it a little bit longer, but it will soon be time to pack up. it's time for the worst bit and that's the dreaded pack up i'm going to get everything packed away i'll obviously leave those rods to the last minute just in case we get one more eel but i enjoyed that it was really nice to get a couple of slightly bigger eels on the bank in my world any eel over four pound is a specimen eel so i was really pleased with that last time i eel fished for the cameras although we caught a lot more eels we never had anything quite as big as that but if you didn't see that previous eel video it's worth a watch as well i'm going to put a link to that video in the description below so you can catch up on that previous episode and if you did like this episode don't forget to give it a like subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future episodes of specimen series and i really must get all this put in the van and get on the road and i'll catch up with you on the next specimen series